In the quaint town of Victoria, a severe discomfort in Victoria's private area prompted her to seek assistance from local authorities. Victoria, a charming nine-year-old girl, thrived on the excitement of athletics and team games. She loved skipping rope and cherished the moments spent forging friendships during the much-anticipated break time at school. Despite facing domestic challenges, school served as a sanctuary for her, enveloping her in a cocoon of tranquility and learning. However, once lessons began, Victoria often retreated into silence, and noticeable changes in her demeanor became apparent. Although she found solace in her studies, particularly her fascination with animals, her struggle with arithmetic led to stress during exam periods and inevitable inaccuracies. Her father's frequent reprimands over her academic struggles only intensified the pressure on her, yet her unwavering resolve to succeed never wavered. Victoria aspired to a future in veterinary medicine, driven by her love for caring for adorable creatures. Life at home was fraught with challenges for Victoria and her father, Rodrigo. Their financial struggles were compounded by the tragic loss of Victoria's mother and two siblings in a horrific bus accident three years earlier, which had a profound impact on their lives. What was meant to be an enjoyable coastal outing turned into a nightmare when their return journey on an improvised bus ended in disaster, claiming the lives of nearly all passengers. Rodrigo, who had saved for years for this special family trip, was left both physically and emotionally shattered. The accident not only claimed his wife and two children but also left him with a severely impaired leg, limiting his ability to perform labor-intensive work at 35. Rodrigo found himself grappling with the dual burdens of his youth and disability. The devastating accident transformed him into a withdrawn and reticent man, a shadow of the joyful person he once was. Victoria, still too young to fully comprehend the depth of her father's despair, tried her best to lighten his mood and alleviate his sorrow with small acts of help around the house. She washed dishes and swept floors, yet always felt her efforts fell short of truly easing his burdens. Amidst the pressures of maintaining two jobs to sustain their household, Rodrigo barely found time or energy to engage with his daughter. His exhaustion was palpable, evident in his weary demeanor and the strain of his round-the-clock commitments, largely left to fend for herself. Victoria displayed remarkable resilience in the face of her challenging circumstances. In the sanctuary of the school, she momentarily found an escape from her troubled life. A brief respite amidst the hustle and bustle of her everyday struggles, in the bustling world of academia, Victoria had managed to carve out a fragile sense of peace for herself. This stability, however, was abruptly shattered when her father, Rodrigo, returned home one day. His clenched fists and contorted facial expressions were a clear reflection of his fury, sending waves of terror through Victoria, safe in her own room. She trembled with fear as the sound of her father's heavy footsteps grew louder. His slurred words carried an unexpected order. She was to stay away from school on a Saturday, a directive that only heightened her distress. His incoherent mental state further amplified her fear. Two days later, Victoria began experiencing an unusual discomfort, particularly in her private areas. She awoke to this unsettling reality and since that morning, a persistent sense of unease had lingered. Her father had left for work unusually early. She dressed herself, tidied her hair, and consumed the stale coffee he had brewed two days prior. All the while, she maintained the same uneasy mood. As she walked to school, the discomfort evolved into a constant, throbbing pain that worsened with each step. By the time she arrived in her classroom, the discomfort had escalated to the point where she could hardly concentrate during her first class. When the bell rang for break, she rushed to join her friends in the playground. However, her movements only aggravated her discomfort. Trying to engage with her friends, every movement brought a stabbing pain. Unable to bear the pain any longer, she voiced her concerns to her puzzled friends. Their confusion led them to their tutor, Clara who upon seeing Victoria's worried features became instantly anxious, she began to talk to Victoria, encouraging her to share her problem. Tears welled up in Victoria's eyes as she hesitantly conveyed her discomfort, subtly hinting at a deeper sense of unease. 
When Victoria mentioned that she only had her father at home, Clara's concern deepened. Clara was alarmed by this information, as she had little knowledge about Rodrigo who rarely appear at parent-teacher meetings, aware of the potential dangers faced by children like Victoria. Clara proceeded with caution. She looked for any signs that might indicate abnormal behavior by her father. Victoria, unsure of how to react, lowered her head, flooded with memories of the day her father had barged into her room displaying evident anger. She had tried to reassure him that everything was fine and that the pain had disappeared. However, she decided to remain quiet for the time being. She returned to her spot and observed helplessly while the unfortunate Victoria attempted to hide her discomfort. Aiming to shield Clara from her sorrows, Clara couldn't dismiss the troubled pupil from her thoughts as she became increasingly fascinated and concerned about Victoria's well-being. Throughout the day, Victoria, a young and seemingly reserved girl, quietly considered various ways she might be of assistance to those around her. Despite her efforts, it was evident that she was grappling with a deep-seated discomfort, which greatly hindered her ability to focus, day after day. The same pain forced her to retrace her steps back home, where she was engulfed in relentless suffering. This left her feeling increasingly isolated and helpless, bearing her sorrow in solitude, unsure of whom she could trust with her burdensome secrets. Laura, a perceptive educator at Victoria's school, noticed that something was amiss with her student, with genuine concern etched across her face. She gently approached Victoria and asked, Victoria, is everything genuinely all right? Victoria managed a forced smile, a facade that poorly masked the inner turmoil brewing within her. Laura, unconvinced by the response, made it a point to keep a close watch on Victoria, bringing the matter to the attention of other teachers as well. The school's headmaster had already received multiple documents that raised suspicions about Victoria's welfare. Despite numerous investigations, Victoria remained tight-lipped. Scared that revealing her secret might lead to harsh judgment or punishment, amid this ongoing torment, Victoria struggled with the continued absence of her mother. As weeks passed, her struggles showed no signs of abating, which pushed her into deeper despair. At school, Victoria found some solace in her solitude, as there was no one to distract her from her problems. Concerned whispers amongst other parents and onlookers slowly built a collective realization that something was seriously amiss with the introverted student, observing her somber demeanor and tendency to keep her head bowed low. They hoped to offer solace and acceptance. Nonetheless, Victoria remained cautious, fully aware of the severity of her family's issues and the potential impact on her and her father. The school's instructors, deeply concerned for Victoria, continuously engaged with her, keeping a vigilant eye on her behavior. Their suspicions deepened when they noticed Victoria's evident fear whenever her father was mentioned. Then, on a fateful day, Victoria entered the school premises burdened by the severe discomfort she had been silently enduring. Suddenly, the discomfort became unbearable, prompting her to scream out in despair. Clara, the teacher presiding over the class, rushed to Victoria's aid. Victoria, what's going on? She inquired urgently, Victoria could only sob in response, leading Clara to swiftly escort her to the clinic. Her father, Rodrigo, alarmed by the situation, rushed from his work to attend to his daughter, contacting the school headmaster and engaging emergency response personnel on his way. Upon arriving, Rodrigo's concern was palpable as he tried to console his distraught daughter. My dear, tell me what the trouble is, he implored gently. However, Victoria's misery left her unable to articulate her thoughts coherently, her only wish was to return home, yet she was also terrified of the consequences of involving her tutor and inconveniencing her father at his work. As Rodrigo tried to unravel the mystery of his daughter's pain, he felt a profound sense of urgency to alleviate her suffering and find a resolution. A wave of panic washed over Rodrigo as he watched the school staff react to his child Victoria's distress. The atmosphere in the room shifted dramatically when two law enforcement officers entered, their stern demeanor signaling a significant change in the situation. Accusations of violence against Victoria left Rodrigo in a state of shock and disbelief. What are you implying? 
This is my child, he protested vehemently, his voice thick with denial. Despite his protests, the officers dismissed his claims and handcuffed him, filled with desperation and disbelief. Rodrigo fervently repudiated the charges, his protests echoing loudly in the room, witnessing her father being detained only heightened Victoria's fear, causing her world to disintegrate before her eyes. Overcome by substantial guilt, Victoria couldn't shake off the feeling that she was somehow responsible for her father's misfortune. Her pleas of no, daddy, no, reverberated through the school, amplifying the distress felt by the staff and her classmates. Worried parents at the school questioned the security of their own children, their concern evident at the thought of a parent causing harm to their child. In an effort to restore order amidst the tumult, the school headmaster hastily arranged for Victoria to be urgently evacuated to a clinic, recognizing her dire need for immediate assistance. Meanwhile, at the law enforcement building, Rodrigo was seething with rage and confusion. Struggling to grasp the severity of the allegations against him, his thoughts were dominated by concern for his daughter's welfare, yearning to provide solace yet being confined to a bleak, merciless cell. I swear I haven't wronged anyone, he insisted to the officers, his paternal affection apparent in each word. Nevertheless, his protests were met with skeptical looks as law enforcement reiterated the necessity of a comprehensive investigation. Feeling unjustly vilified and full of guilt, consumed by the pain his child was enduring, Rodrigo cried out, I need to see my daughter. His despair was deeply tangible, yet his pleading fell on deaf ears, forcing him to cope with his inner torment alone. Amidst the chaos, some fellow detainees moved towards Rodrigo, drawn in by his visible distress. In a shaky voice, Rodrigo explained the chilling scenario, his silent tears revealing his agony. The detainees exchanged knowing glances, their faces colored with doubt, kids are holy, one of them solemnly voiced, highlighting the serious nature of the accusations laid upon Rodrigo. As the situation became increasingly confusing and daunting, Rodrigo retreated within himself, seeking solace in his solitary confines while longing for news about his precious daughter, even as they walked away to the other end of the detention center. Their conversation continued to echo in his ears. If he had indeed harmed his daughter, lifelong confinement was just. The thought of his innocence echoed in Rodrigo's mind, quickening his pulse. But was he truly blameless? Elsewhere, Victoria lay in her hospital bed, heavily sedated to ease her pain, noticing bloodstains on her clothes. The doctor quietly alerted her to the severity of her condition deepening the concern for her well-being and the unfolding drama surrounding her father's arrest. As the day of her upcoming examination loomed, young Victoria was engulfed in a storm of tearful and disoriented cries, underscored by a palpable fear. Her anxiety was further amplified by the absence of her father, and despite the best comforting efforts from Clara, Laura, and the director of the medical facility, her weeping persisted. This confirmed to her worried caretakers that she was indeed in a safe place, even as the medical team quickly took the necessary samples and performed the assessments required for her diagnosis. Approaching with a gentle demeanor, the doctor kindly engaged Victoria, addressing her as sweetheart to ease into a conversation about her discomfort. With an innocuous gesture, Victoria indicated her pain by pointing to her abdomen. Upon inspection, the doctor, with a soothing tone, delivered the mixed news, your stomach is okay, she articulated clearly, only to add, but you have a bladder infection which might cause some pain during bathroom visits. The doctor further explained that Victoria, still significantly young, was stepping into puberty, a natural process, yet one that might cause even more discomfort. The ladies in attendance received this news with a mix of relief and initial surprise. Their reactions met with a small, reassuring smile from the doctor. No signs of harm were found, the young girl's discomfort attributed to normal bodily changes. Victoria had been diagnosed with early-onset puberty, a health issue likely exacerbated by urinary system maladies caused by pH disparities in her private zones. The gravity of all the discomfort was far too overwhelming for her delicate eight-year-old frame to handle. Her carers experienced a surge of relief, 
their disbelief as clear as if a massive burden had been lifted, yet remorse gnawed at them for hastily implicating Victoria's father, Rodrigo. In denying him the chance to justify his actions, they acted promptly, getting in touch with the police, insisting on Rodrigo's release, you're vindicated, speckled the warden as he swung open his cell door, permitting Rodrigo's tears of relief to stream down unchecked, Rodrigo, a soft-spoken, rugged-looking man, was known to be a caring and devoted father to Victoria. His challenging job routine often inhibited his perception of his daughter's condition. Coming home to find her either asleep or heading to school was a regular routine regardless of adversities like losing his job and resorting to panhandling to scrape by. His affection for Victoria was unaltered, his only kin left after a devastating incident, inside the hospital. Rodrigo's heart pounded as he anticipated embracing his cherished daughter and assuring her that he was blameless and committed to her unconditionally. Teachers and authority figures scrambled to make amends for their grave oversight. At long last, the OBGYN guided Victoria into her father's welcoming arms. Their emotional reunion was palpable as they held each other tight, the warmth of their bond helping to dispel the shared distress. Rodrigo asked for forgiveness from his daughter and promised to be there for her come what may. The doctor's disclosure about Victoria being safe despite earlier apprehensions was a tremendous relief for Rodrigo, who was immensely thankful to the doctor for his reassurance. The lingering discomfort at the school led the principal to offer Rodrigo a position as a porter, aiming to alleviate the embarrassment that both he and his daughter had endured. Thrilled by the opportunity of stable employment in a more favorable environment, Rodrigo eagerly accepted the offer. Recognizing that it would ensure a better future for his beloved daughter, Victoria, with Victoria's health improving and Rodrigo's innocence established, a serene tranquility settled over their lives. These trials highlighted Rodrigo's unwavering love for his daughter, a bond that seemed to only strengthen over time. This story concludes as a poignant reminder of the lasting power of love and the enduring connection between a parent and their child, reflecting on the story. Do you have any insights or thoughts you would like to share? Please feel free to express your perspectives in the common area as we transition to our next narrative. In another scene, the resonant call of the academic bell echoed as a tardy student rushed into his most critical class of the term, only to be met with a challenging question from his teacher. His unexpected response left the entire room, including the lecturer, in awe. Simultaneously, Jake awoke. The gentle morning sunlight streaming through his window casting a warm amber glow across his room, realizing he had overslept, he frantically searched for his phone, only to find its battery had drained overnight. A surge of panic set in as he noticed the time indicated by a wall-mounted clock. It was already half past nine. Facing his predicament, Jake hurriedly dressed, bypassing breakfast and grappling with a disorganized room full of scattered clothes and non-functional gadgets. In his rush, he accidentally splashed toothpaste onto his clean clothes, a vexing issue that only worsened with each failed attempt to remove the stain. As time slipped away, he reluctantly wore the stained outfit and rushed out, grabbing his house keys and backpack with desperate urgency. Descending the residence hall stairs, fortune dealt him a harsh blow, a sprained ankle, causing instant pain and temporarily impeding his progress, convincing himself to persevere. He limped towards the campus bus stop, each painful step seeming to last an eternity and heightening his growing unease. Finally, the bus arrived, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the chaotic start to his day. However, the crowded bus felt suffocating as Jake struggled to find space among the throng of commuting students, as he reflected on his deteriorating day, squeezed within the masses. Every pause and delay seemed deliberately designed to thwart his determination to make it to class on time. His anxiety intensified with each passing moment, making the journey to campus a true test of his resolve. This wasn't just any ordinary lecture that Jake was rushing to attend. It was a deep dive into the intricate realms of mathematical and physical theories presented by Professor Landon, a subject matter that Jake was particularly passionate about. Known for his strict adherence to the schedule, 
Professor Landon's punctuality intensified Jake's anxiety about being late. When the bus finally screeched to a stop at his destination, Jake leapt from his seat and sprinted towards the lecture hall the moment the doors opened. Despite his disheveled appearance, his determination to attend the lecture was steadfast. It was an opportunity he couldn't afford to miss. As he entered the lecture hall, a mix of relief and anxiety washed over him. Looking around hastily, he found an empty seat while his classmates' curious eyes followed him. Clearly taken aback by his rushed entrance, Professor Landon, maintaining his stern demeanor, gave Jake a reproachful yet expectant look and remarked sarcastically, Well, well, Mr. Jake Sully, it's unusual to see you here today. Did it slip your mind that our session starts at 8.30, not 9.45? Jake felt a wave of embarrassment as laughter rippled through his peers, starting to explain his lateness. I apologize. Professor, my phone's battery died last night. Jake was swiftly cut off by Landon, who sarcastically retorted, How fortunate, given that you seem to regard this session as trivial. The professor then challenged him with a seemingly impossible mathematical riddle. Can you demonstrate that zero equals one? The question delivered with a sardonic smile. Hung heavily in the air, leaving Jake momentarily mortified, it was a well-known tactic by Professor Landon, designed to chastise Jake for his tardiness. Despite the daunting atmosphere, Jake, unlike his predecessors, mustered his courage. Taking a deep breath, he tackled the problem with an innovative approach. Drawing on set theory and quantum logic, he proposed that in the quantum realm, where systems can exist in multiple states simultaneously. The traditional notion that zero does not equal one could be challenged. In this alternative reality, zero, representing an empty set, might theoretically assume the value of one. Jake's bold theory elicited gasps of astonishment from the room. Even Professor Landon, typically stoic and authoritative, was visibly taken aback, undeterred. Jake elaborated on his theory, seamlessly integrating complex mathematical frameworks with principles of quantum physics. A hushed silence fell over the room as classmates exchanged looks of disbelief. Landon, once a pillar of certainty, found himself grappling with the implications of Jake's revolutionary concept. After a moment of contemplation, he conceded, albeit hesitantly, Mr. Sully, you're suggesting a quantum way to look at set theory, an idea that, questions are the fundamental building blocks of mathematics, a subject that stirs curiosity and transforms classrooms into arenas of intellectual exploration. This was particularly true in the case of Jake, whose journey in academia was marked by more than just routine learning, it evolved into an avenue for intellectual adventuring, Despite Jake's apparent exhaustion from the constant probing and questioning, he recognized that his breakthrough was not just a stroke of luck but the result of a long, challenging journey that mirrored the breadth of knowledge he had navigated. As the class session concluded, whispers of amazement followed Jake. Blending with Professor Landon's reluctant acknowledgement of interest, in those brief moments within the revered halls of education, a new narrative began fueled by the tantalizing prospects of uncovering new knowledge and an unyielding thirst for human curiosity, Jake Sully's unconventional approach in the lecture hall was a reflection of his non-traditional background, born to humble beginnings. This budding prodigy displayed an early affinity for mathematics and science. His curiosity extended beyond mere numbers to the intricate concepts they represented. By the age of 10, Jake was already delving into complex texts, seeking refuge in the challenges that defied conventional academic norms. Despite his academic excellence, Jake's relationship with his teachers was fraught with tension. They recognized his brilliance but were wary of his instinct to question authority and deviate from the prescribed syllabus. His constant questioning of why blind adherence to these dictates was necessary fueled his intense desire to delve deeper into physics and mathematics, often putting him at odds with his educators. Key turning points during his youth would shape the trajectory of his life. Jake's participation in a youth science competition marked one such moment. There, he fearlessly challenged the core principles of quantum physics with his innovative ideas, initially dismissed. 
His hypothesis caught the attention of Dr. Harrison, a prominent physicist who saw something unique in Jake's unconventional thought process. Dr. Harrison became more than just a mentor, he ignited in Jake a passion to question established theories. Under Dr. Harrison's guidance, Jake courageously ventured into uncharted waters, attempting to integrate set theory, mathematical logic, and quantum physics into a unified theory. At home, Jake's intellectual prowess was evident, and he enjoyed the unwavering support of his parents throughout his academic journey. They made countless sacrifices to nurture his educational pursuits. Look forward to the day when you, my son, will be a marvel of intelligence. His mother would often reassure him, providing much-needed uplift during bouts of self-doubt and introspective musings that were an integral part of Jake's tumultuous teenage years. Jake was inherently different from his peers, and he often grappled with his uniqueness, especially as he pondered his path after high school graduation, faced with the tough decision of fitting in or steadfastly pursuing his intense love for science. Jake analyzed various admission offers from prestigious universities. Ultimately, he chose to attend the academic institution presided over by Professor Landon, drawn profoundly to the university's acclaimed mathematics and physics programs. The department played a pivotal role in shaping Jake's decision, which not only offered a pathway to further his education but also provided an opportunity to connect with peers who were equally passionate about challenging conventional norms. Jake's academic journey was fraught with numerous obstacles, including late-night study sessions and bouts of self-doubt, yet, each hurdle he overcame contributed to expanding his repository of knowledge. A remarkable revelation with the potential to astonish the world was yet to be unveiled and it all hinged on a significant event that occurred when Jake was just 18. This experience served as a catalyst, unleashing his genius and innovative perspective on mathematical and physical theories. Under the mentorship of the scientist Harrison, Jake participated in an experiment at an advanced research laboratory. During this experiment, Jake faced a life-threatening situation caused by a mistake that exposed him to a mysterious form of radiation. This incident resulted in an extraordinary transformation in Jake's cognitive abilities. Already intellectually gifted, Jake began to perceive mathematical structures with unprecedented precision and could grasp the complexities of quantum mechanics that had previously been beyond his reach. It seemed as though the borders of his comprehension had been shattered, revealing a world brimming with infinite potential. Intrigued and slightly concerned by these developments, Dr. Harrison decided to conduct confidential neurological exams on Jake. The results were astonishing. The radiation encounter had fundamentally altered Jake's neural structure, enhancing his cognitive skills in inexplicable ways. Despite the changes, Jake continued his studies with renewed vigor. He delved deeper into mathematics and physics. Now equipped with exceptional mental sharpness, his ability to harmonize seemingly contradictory theories astounded his colleagues. He introduced transformative concepts that challenged traditional beliefs, such as the idea that zero could be synonymous with one under certain quantum conditions. Despite his impressive mental capabilities, Jake maintained a humble and reserved demeanor, acknowledging that there was still much to learn and discover in the world of science. His ambition was not to seek attention but to make significant contributions to the advancement of knowledge. This was evident when Jake made a bold claim during a lecture, which resulted in a tangible mix of awe and skepticism filling the room. Even Professor Landon, known for his unshakable composure, regarded Jake with newfound respect, thereby concluding the lecture for the day. This happenstance occurrence sparked Professor Landon's interest leading him on a deep dive into the intricacies of quantum mechanics and advanced mathematics to unravel the seemingly convoluted rationale behind Jake's daring hypothesis. Believing in the potential and significance of Jake's work, Professor Landon convened a meeting with respected academics in the domains of physics and mathematics. The aim was to subject Jake's proposition to a stringent examination to discern its credibility and explore its implications further. As the time for his presentation drew near, Jake was entrusted with the crucial task of presenting his hypothesis to a gathering of eminent researchers. 
With each passing moment, his nervousness grew, and he whispered to himself, it's now or never, he took a deep, calming breath to steady his trembling hands, introduced to the scholarly assembly by Professor Landon. Jake stood before them as the young researcher who had crafted a hypothesis with the potential to radically alter the existing beliefs about mathematical rationale and quantum mechanics. Professor Landon set the stage for Jake to elaborate on the key elements of his theory, positioning himself strategically in front of the whiteboard for a visual demonstration. Jake began sketching out intricate configurations of lines and curves that collectively formed a theoretical symphony. With a pen in hand and leaning into his presentation, he confidently proclaimed, think about the dual identity within quantum systems, his voice resonated through the room, breaking the silence as he posed a provocative thought, if absence could be considered a stage in quantum mechanics, the coexistence of zero and one might suddenly seem plausible, as Jake elucidated, his pen swiftly traced out equations that transcended conventional understanding, methodically. He deconstructed the logic behind his theory, with each symbol and equation standing as a testament to his deep comprehension. He suggested that if superstring theory were invoked, an intersecting point would be revealed, one where the dichotomy between zero and one does not necessarily imply incompatible states. Initially met with skepticism, the group of esteemed professors and experts gradually became engrossed in Jake's discourse. The potential ramifications of his hypothesis unfolding before them, their attention intensified, some furrowed their brows in deep thought while others nodded in agreement, as the presentation progressed, it effectively dispelled any lingering skepticism, captivating them with the magnitude of Jake's proposition, once he concluded, a profound silence enveloped the room, a silence not of shock, but of genuine awe, excellent job truly impressive, an individual exclaimed. There were words of celebration resonating throughout the space, a rare grin appeared on Professor Landon's face as he turned his gaze towards Jake, acknowledging, Mr. Sully, your actions have sparked a revolution in our scientific community, astonishing many of our most respected minds. Filled with a mix of satisfaction, joy, validation, and a lingering apprehension, Jake exited the executive suite, his presentation at the educational seminar marked merely the beginning of an extraordinary journey. Over the ensuing months, his theory, now referred to as the Sully Duality Principle, gained increasing recognition among academic circles. Requests poured in for Jake to share his research in renowned scholarly publications, culminating in him receiving the Young Innovator Award in Theoretical Physics, an impressive accolade that heralded his arrival as a significant contributor to the field. Considering his upbringing, the recognition Jake received hinted at his impending capacity to reshape the field of theoretical physics, further affirming his influential stance. Colleges and universities worldwide eagerly embraced the Sully Duality Principle as a topic for academic study and spirited debate. This led to extending invitations to Jake to conduct talks and participate in symposiums as an esteemed figure within the academic community. His fame surged as he became an acclaimed mathematical physicist renowned for his groundbreaking quantum theories. However, for Jake, the accolades and awards served merely as a gateway to a deeper understanding of humanity, not as the ultimate destination. While collaborating with other scientists and notable personalities to refine and expand his theories, his drive was deeply rooted in understanding the fundamental makeup of the universe and igniting a sense of wonder in the minds of the next generation. Initially skeptical, Professor Landon eventually became one of his most ardent supporters, recognizing the transformative power of challenging and shifting long-held beliefs. Jake's journey from humbly confounding his peers with an unexpected discovery to becoming a distinguished icon in theoretical physics is remarkable. With a peaceful smile on his lips, he sat amidst a whirl of books and documents, contemplating an infinite future. He understood that each discovery was merely a step on an unending path of knowledge that concludes today's stories. If you enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.